Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, uh, you still get tomorrow's review um, of Doctor Who's Series 1, Episode 1, Rose, and that'll be the start of uh, a new series. Um, this is a bit of a different video. Um, so, I used to write stories, and this isn't a script, so you'll see what this is in a minute, but uh, I used to write stories um, when I was in college, so about two years ago now, which is actually mental to think about, but anyway. So a couple of years ago I used to write stories, I used to love writing stories, and recently I got back into it. Um, and I just wanted to, to quickly share with you uh, one of one of my stories that I wrote up, uh, you know, uh, a couple of days ago, well you don't know. I wrote this up, I started this a couple of days ago, I took a break from it, and then I finished it last night, I did some editing, oh sorry no, this morning sorry, I did some editing on it. And I printed it, and uh, so yes, this is short story. It's only five, sorry, four pages long. About one, two, three, about three and a half pages long. It's entirely fiction. Um, although, if you are a Doctor Who fan, you may notice a, a slight reference at the end, um, but that's a very subtle reference. But uh, but yeah, so. Here we go. This is called My Ghostly Experience. Uh, working title. I couldn't. I didn't really know what to put for the title. <clears throat> Me and some friends of mine had always been interested in the paranormal and cryptids. So one day we decided we were going to explore the local graveyard at night. We each prepared a backpack of supplies. These supplies included were some food, some drink, and a small baton in each hand. We ordered them online. These are small enough to fit in our backpacks and yet heavy enough to use as defence should we need it. Anyway, so we headed out at around 12. As we headed out, we were all pretty nervous yet rather excited. The graveyard connected to, uh, to a 500 year old church. There was something disturbingly distorted about this particular graveyard. It always gave passing people a sense of a disturbing enigma, so much so that you would notice people start to speed up as they passed by with an anxious expression on their faces. We arrived at the graveyard at around 12.15. As we arrived, I thought I could hear a rather heavy breathing. However, I just chalked this up to paranoia. This still made me feel uncomfortable. I was afraid that my friends would have thought trying to scare them, you know, laughing. As we started walking down this muddy, winding path, my friend named James began to look puzzled and turned to the corner behind him, as if he could see something. When all of a sudden his face turned to a terror and he started sprinting further down the dark, twisting path. Worried for our friend, we soon chased after him. We soon caught up to him. The moment we saw him, we knew that we were in trouble. My friend's face had become sunken and absent, with his eyes becoming drooped, as if all the joy had been sucked out of him, and looking on with horror and extreme despair. What was weird about this is that that particular friend didn't actually believe in ghosts, and yet didn't usually scare easily. In fact, he was known as the muscle of the group. Anyway. His pupils were widely dilated and his lips began to tremble with horror. So we decided to take him home. My other friends decided to stay back and make sure that he was okay. Me, on the other hand, craving adventure, decided to go back to answer some questions I had. I always thought this was weird because despite being completely terrified and alone, I was so captivated by what had spooked my friend. By what had made him... So, what had basically broken his whole character. I got to the point where my friend had stood still and seemingly stared at nothing. I looked over with a torch as I scanned by the nearby trees, when all of a sudden this big black figure had dashed between the trees. I had felt the coldest of chills go down my spine, the hairs on my neck standing as tall as a building, when all of a sudden, crack! 
The sudden sound of what seemed to be bones cracking against a hard surface with a stomach-churning scream soon followed. This scream was like no other scream ever heard before. It was as if a thousand of souls were crying out for help, feeling the simultaneous pain of every cell in their body burning with agony. I started to jog down the winding, turning path, when I started to hear whispers creeping up at me, getting louder and louder. These whispers got so impossibly loud, to this day I wonder how nobody else heard them. These whispers got so loud, I started to shriek in pain, and then as if, by miracle, there was utter silence. However, this silence was so deafening, it, my relief had soon, had soon turned to panic. I gathered my bearings and started darting my head in all directions, checking to see if I could spot him from trying to sneak up on him. And every now and then, I would feel as though I was getting quick glimpse of different shaped silhouettes. I had stopped running to find a wall. I was sure I could climb to escape. Before I left, I took one quick glance behind me to make sure nothing would drag me down from the wall. When I caught a glimpse of the top of the church window to find this disfigured looking Persian waving on with a smile made of pure nightmares spanning from ear to ear. This was certainly enough to make me leave. And as I left, I heard possibly the most haunting and most menacing of laughs. This happened a couple of years ago. And since then, I have moved away to the countryside of Scotland, by the most beautifully tall cliffs that looked as though as if they went on forever. However, I regret to inform you that my friend James came out of his comatose-like state. However, he wasn't the same. He was no longer the talkative and tall-standing person he once was. Before he suffered from depression and frequent anxiety attacks. And eventually, on the 23rd of November of last year, he sadly took his own life. And ever since that happened, I'd always felt a sense of responsibility and guilty as it was my idea to go. Dedicated to James Fernandez, born the 9th of May, 1991, died the 23rd of November, no date given. And that concludes, oh dear, <laughs> the page has fallen out. What page would this be? Uh, first one. That concludes my story. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, I know it's not good, but uh, I, I'm really proud of it. You know? I try to be as, as descriptive and imaginative as possible. And what I try to do when I type my stories or write them or, or whatever you do, when I do my stories, I try to be as descriptive and paint as clear and crisp as a picture as possible, as if you were standing there yourselves. Hence why I used winding and turning and dark, muddy, uh, you know, with the, with the, what do you call it? Winding paths, that was it. With the winding paths. Because I, I, want, I want the reader to feel entranced by the story. I want them to feel as if they're experiencing it themselves. Anyway. So, that was my ghostly experience. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Doctor Who review uh, series premiere. Goodbye. <laughs> I meant to stop there, but I uh, I missed the recording spot, as I was saying. Goodbye.